Hey everybody, welcome back to new videos channel and today we look into a feature that's quite new in Nuxt. 3.16 came out and that's part of it and it's also kind of new in view. Delayed hydration. Don't know what hydration is or delayed hydration in this case? Then let's check it out. Here we go. If you're a user of SSR, either with a framework like Nuxt or maybe something with another setup, then hydration or especially hydration errors might have come across in your console, I guess. And um, if, if not, if you're building plain SPAs, then you're all good, you don't have hydration. But you might wonder what hydration exactly is. And for that, we look into some old slides of mine. When we do some classic server-side rendering, then after the initial request, we usually get something. And that something is, well, HTML, inline CSS, serialized state, and so on, so on. So the document itself, right? That's the start. And as soon as that's received, well, the site is visible. But it's not interactive yet. To make interactive, well, we need to download the JavaScript that's also linked in the HTML here, right? And also execute it. So like we need to initialize view, Nuxt, all the logic around that, and of course also attach listeners. And that's very important because then your add click, add mouse over and so on and so on will actually work. And then the site is interactive. And of course there are also client side logic happening like on mounted, on before mounted, all these lifecycle hooks that only run on the client. And if you wonder what part of that here is hydration, well, the one in the middle. So this part here is what is called hydration. And depending on your size of your application and the size of the page, especially the components you use, that can be quite costly, especially in bigger e-commerce projects. That is usually a big part of, well, CPU power because you need to execute all the components even if you might not need them. And here is where delayed hydration comes into play because delayed hydration actually allows to, or like lazy hydration, allows us to take components and say, hey, hydrate them later. Maybe when they come into viewport after a certain time, when the browser is idle for some custom logic or never. Let's take a look at how Vue supports that because that's also quite new. And when I say quite new, then it came with the latest Vue minor release 3.5 in September 2024. And thanks to that, yeah, that's part of the SSR improvements here, that lazy hydration is available. Now, you would have to use that low-level API by using define async component here and then set up either a custom hydration strategy or an existing hydration strategy from Vue.js. But as Evan wrote in his blog post here as well, the core API is intentionally lower level and the Nux team is already building higher level syntax sugar on top of this feature. So the idea here was to say Vue provides that low-level API so that Nux and we eventually can use the feature to build something more easy to use on top because there are a few things to consider. Like we shouldn't load the component when it's, well, hydrated later on, right? So when it's, so to say, lazily hydrated, then we don't want the JavaScript at first. And also we want to make sure that there is an expressive API and we don't have to write a define async component again and again. So why not showcasing a little demo how the whole thing works and then see how this actually implemented. Let's jump into our demo application. Our demo application is as minimal as possible as we usually try to, right? So we just have some easy style offset for, well, obviously black background, so dark mode, compatibility date that's set, no problem at all. And very importantly, we start straight away with just an indexed view. That could also be an apted view, doesn't matter too much. And we don't have much in here. We have a diff that says test and has a huge margin bottom. And then we have our app footer. And our app footer is very simple. It just says, this is a footer. And actually we can remove that part here even, and we're good. And if we take a look at how that looks like in the browser, then we see the following. Surprise, it says test, we scroll, this is the footer. And very interestingly, if we now have a look on the network, we refresh, then of course we get all the files, right? And we're in dev mode, so also we just loading the Nux dev tools and so on and so on. Okay, great. So what we wanna do now is we want to make sure that the footer is lazily hydrated. So as I've shown in another video about the lazy prefix, if we just set the footer to lazy app footer, it doesn't make much sense because we don't have a V for something attached, so the component itself can't be lazy loaded. But what we can do now is we can say, okay, it should be there during SSR, but it should be hydrated only when it's visible. So the content of the component is there, but the JavaScript for it is loaded and executed way later. So we can actually extract it out of the main bundle. It's an extra file. We can load it like a lazy component with the if, but without the if, but with different conditionals. So 
it is more or less a more fine-grained laziness, but not offloading the whole component, just the part that's related to the JavaScript. So on the initial request, it is actually there. And that's what a lot of people were waiting for, because this means a lot of fine-grained component improvements for all cases of scenarios, right? But no more talking, let's show it. And to do so, all we have to do is we go to our index page and here we call it lazy app footer. Now, as I mentioned before, this is something I would not have recommended before because there wasn't lazy hydration, but now we can do that. That's not enough, of course, that doesn't help us right now. We also need to define a hydration strategy. So we type hydrate and then we see already, okay, we have certain strategies like hydrate never at all on idle, browser idle right and interaction when it's visible, or we can define an own ref and say whenever this is true, hydrate. We go with hydrate invisible because it's the most straightforward one to showcase and we save the whole thing. Now, it will be more interesting in production mode to showcase, but even in dev mode, it's visible. So let's see how this will look like now in the browser. All right, let's refresh the whole page and fully clean the dev tools here. So we have no request loaded. We have the test part here and now we scroll down and now we see this is the footer. And here we see that the app footer has been loaded when this came into the screen. So this is exactly what we want. The JavaScript is loaded later. But very importantly, if we take a look at the page source now, then we also see the footer part here. So as I described before, the component is actually included also during SSR, but the JavaScript is only loaded, well, whenever you decide it should be loaded. What we can also do is to say, okay, we can hydrate it never ever at all, because in this case, well, it's fully static. We don't even need to add anything in terms of JavaScript. So for static components, it's super powerful. So you can skip all the JavaScript that you don't need. And of course, that's not all. Each of the lazy components that are lazily hydrated with hydration strategy also emits a hydrated event. So here we can say on hydrated, for example, we can define a function, or in this case, let's just make it a very simple arrow function to say alert footer is hydrated. And if we check the browser now, once again, it will be very interesting to see that this works. So once again, refreshing the page and then scrolling all the way down and here we see the food is hydrated. Great, and that's it. Now the food is hydrated, the event kicks off once and we're good. So you can even trigger things when you see, oh yeah, the component is ready now. Maybe I want to, I don't know, trigger some things based on a ref or do various other operations. And as I mentioned, this is super powerful because just think about it. You have 60 elements on the page, but only 10 are actually in the viewport. Now you can say, hey, delay the hydration of the rest of it because you don't really need it at all. So that could really cut down the CPU usage and make your site even perform better. But of course, that's only relevant in the initial request. So when people navigate from slash A to slash B, there is no hydration happening, right? It's only relevant when there is a hard refresh or someone comes from an external page. Now that you've seen an example, let's look into how this is actually implemented in Nux.js itself and take a look at the PR of it. And the PR itself was pending quite a while, right? It was already introduced in March 2024, just because there were a few iterations on how to do these things. So let's check out the files and see what is actually happening under the hood. Also on this point, shout out to everybody contributing to it because it is an amazing feature and is glad that Nux as a framework has that as well. So one important part is the lazy hydration transform file that we have here, because in the end we have another plugin, another unplugin actually, to make sure we have transforms applied. And these transforms are super important because first of all, we want to make sure, okay, if you create a lazy component with an hydration strategy, so that we can see here, for example, with lazy, my component, then hydrate on idle, right? We want to make sure, okay, what kind of strategy is it? We want to infer that and then make sure that the transformation that is done basically here under the hood is happening in Nux.js itself. So instead of pre-generating every possible method there with prefixes like we do it with lazy, the PR is basically doing the following. Is there a lazy component at build time with a hydration strategy? And of course, that's also executed in dev mode. So like when transforming stuff, yeah. Then rewrite the code. So under the hood, the transformation with define async component is happening. And let's see how this is done in the code. Here we see we have, of course, walking the AST, taking a look, taking only lazy components over here, then finding the strategy, that's very important. That's also why it only works with single file components and with that directive-like structure, you have to pass the prop in directly. It doesn't work if you use like vbind, unfortunately, because we have to infer it from the actual code there. And then we figure out a strategy and uh, rewrite everything. 
Also, if we go deeper, we have this uh, runtime file here, lazy hydrated component. And here we see we have defined async component for a loader. We have that hydrate by using a certain strategy and eventually run all through that. And then we have different types like hydrate on visible, hydrate on idle, and so on, so on. So all of these are actually usable whenever you have a certain hydration strategy set. It's also important that there are tree shakables. We have that no side effects note here. Bundlers can say, okay, that's great. I can throw them away if they're not really used. And then of course we see all the strategies eventually listed here. Obviously we also have tests to see, okay, are they properly loaded? So this is also something that fully needs to be tested. And eventually like these transformations are all the, let's say magic behind it. Of course, things are documented as well. We have altered some basic tests to make sure things uh, work as expected. And we have these delayed component, delayed model tests in our wonderful fixture. So nothing will break with the new feature. And we see that everything works as expected. Another important part is the loader part where we actually make sure that the components are resolved correctly. So we see there are a few things added here, We're making sure the lazy idle visible and so on, so on. Component prefixes are loaded here because the transform plugin actually only adds the prefix as we've seen before, like the lazy, I think idle here that we have a change lazy my component to lazy idle my component. And that idle part is super helpful because then we can say, okay, based on that idle part, we can load certain components differently. So this is what's happening here. We set up the imports. We, gen <laughs> we, we generate a lot of stuff here, depending on the prefix of it. And eventually things are loaded. Now, this all looks maybe a bit more complicated, especially in a couple of minutes. Feel free to check out the PR. The link is also in the show notes because it's super interesting to learn how this is actually working in the framework itself. And luckily, it's not even that hard to implement if you don't use Nox.js and have a custom SSR setup. There's only one more thing that uh, we haven't shown yet, and that's quite important, which is how does it actually happen that Nuxt removes the prefetch or preload part of the component? Because we see this is only loaded as necessary. And all of this is happening in the lazy hydrated component TS uh, runtime part of Nuxt here. So that new file where we basically say, okay, there is a lazy component defined and whenever the app is being rendered, let's just remove the lazy hydrated component fully from the SSR context so that the prefetch preload tags are not rendered. This is a very elegant solution using Nuxt hooks to just make sure, okay, look, you know what? We have that ID here. Let's just remove it so we don't have that and well, we get the full benefits of the actual hydration part because what helps if you say, oh, we don't have to execute the JavaScript, but you still download or even prefetch it. Luckily, that's not the case anymore. So also here, Nuxt hooks to the rescue. And now I ask you, have you tried out delayed hydration or lazy hydration already? 3.16 is out for a couple of days with a lot of amazing new features, changes, a link to the blog post and also in the description. Yeah, so I wonder, did you try it? If yes, what's your experience so far? What's your favorite rule? I can imagine like hydrate when or hydrate never, pretty good ones. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. As usual, check out uh, the latest Deja View episode where I talk with Patak aka Matthias uh, from the Veed core team about Veed, Void Zero, roll up the whole React React uh, app uh, debacle and so on, so on. Very interesting, even if you're not into React. I mean, we all view people here, right? But I promise you this is an amazing episode with, well, quite some length. So definitely check that one out. And um, yeah, other than that, see you all in the next video on next Friday or maybe in the older ones if you haven't checked it out. There are a lot of other amazing performance uh, videos out there. So yeah, stay tuned. Happy hacking. <laughs>